you guys have of course been doing a lot of work on the b2b side as well and on the digital saas etc you know on the whole crop in side of uh, of the business so what do you see in, and you are operating in 7 60 plus countries globally you know from your experience what are some of the new niches if we double dive on b2b uh, right and double dive more on let's say saas technology you know software you know where do you see there is a marketable opportunity in agtech which is of course large which can uh, which there is propensity to pay and uh, you know which can create a unit economics positive business you know are you you know what what trends are you seeing within that space now as we work with organizations around the world the fundamental issue or the challenge and and by the way our definition of organizations are the large enterprises like shashank was mentioning right the syngentas the bears the basics of the world um or the large food producers right like the uh, uh unilevers the mckains the nestles of the world um or the large banking and and um, insurance and financial institutions so uh, and and definitely also the government right government constitutes almost 20 to 30% as the largest stakeholder for us in our b2b space so when we work in a b2b environment we are working with a variety of these actors now the fundamental issue that all of these actors go through are couple of things right one is um their the, the access to the right data points at the field so uh, for for example syngenta which is uh, you know in in seed production for them to know what happened when they trying to grow a tomato seed on day 1 versus day 10 versus day 20 versus day 50 they are heavily reliant on a very unorganized manner of data collection um so when cropin you know said look why don't we get into the space the ability to provide a platform which can be utilized by field officers of these enterprises right and again same same issue also occurs with mckin mckin is trying to make these potatoes unilever is trying to make these potatoes um and and the potatoes have to be the right shape the right size the right texture for the potato chips that we like right to come out exactly the same way can you imagine going to a mcdonald and saying dude your potato is not the right size or the not, not the right shape or or pringles or or lays right so whenever we are working with all of these enterprises it is very critical for them to get the right data points and uh, one of the biggest enablers from a technology standpoint is how do we move you from a zero state to one state and and i am not joking as we continue to work in 60 odd countries today and hopefully we will cover all parts of the world including antarctica and eventually also go to mars when terraforming uh, terraforming begins but the the fundamental issue that all of us have today is uh, the field officers who go on behalf of these enterprises to the farmlands are still capturing data on a pen and paper right and imagine this is an extension officer who is trying to do something for um say kohinoor rice right like i go to the farm rice has almost 100 to 120 day sowing cycle if i go to the farm i capture something on the 10th day by the time i finish going through all my farms come back to head office with my piece of paper and observation i have already lost 10 days now what are the chances that whatever information i captured on day 1 i will rightly be able to articulate to head office on day 11 or day 12 right and then the agronomist takes a look at it and comes back in a sustainable manner in being able to provide that advisory service to the farmer so you are all, always talking of a loss of a 10 to 20% from a time lag standpoint in these in these sort of crops now similar situations exist with horticulture etc so one of the things that we are definitely finding is there is a need to be able to capture data points at a farm level and bring it all the way back to your head office for two reasons one is ensuring that the right advisory for the right crop for the right climatic zone for the right uh, agro zone is going to the farmer at the right time number 1 and number 2 for from an head office standpoint again for the the, the decision makers to have visibility so again if i'm a procurement guy who is uh, um, who is trying to capture peas uh, uh, the growth of peas for suffal i really need to know how much peas is growing around the country today so my sales and marketing my logistics my supply chain all of that is current, correctly aligned Uh, a small mismatch here or a small mismatch there throws the entire assembly line in you know um, in in madness so we we are definitely seeing a lot of technology adoption in those sectors uh, the other sector where we are seeing a lot of increase or let me rephrase that the other technology where we are seeing a lot of uptake in in the enterprise space is the whole satellite uh, and and remote monitoring right um uh, with with the coming of covid I don't know how many people really are very keen. Like we, we're trying to 
um, uh, start off a lot of live projects with our clients. The projects are coming on board, but when it comes to sending people and staff onto the field, there is a significant amount of resistance. Right? Nobody really wants to step out. So, how do we overcome that situation by utilizing remote sensing and satellite monitoring to be able to predict number one what crop is growing, number two where it is growing, number three what is the stage and health of the crop, and number four what is the yield. And if you think about it, uh, a combination of all these parameters are significantly important for any of the enterprises, any of the organizations working in the agriculture. For, for example, we work with banks, right? Now, when a farmer goes to a bank and says, look, I want $100 to grow tomato, the bank does not really know whether this farmer has ever grown tomato. Number two, has tomato ever grown in that region? And if at all I give a loan for $100, what has the historical yield been? Now, if I am able to handle that fundamental issue without the bank having to send a loan officer to the field and depend on spurious information which may or may not exist, you know, that's a, that's a big value add uh, that we believe tech can bring in. Um, again, going back to the same sort of uh, like McCain, right? If, if I'm able to tell how much potato is growing across the world, then you're able to make your supply chain decisions based on that. So those are some of the significant areas where I think tech makes a big difference to these enterprises. And then, and then so, so, sorry, sorry, Ayman. And then again, you extend the same thing to government, right? Today um, or two years ago, government was making a lot of policy decision making around food security, around subsidy based on some data which I don't know was really valid or not, right? There's a lot of polluted uh, uh, data that sits because of whatever data uh, inaccuracy that we've had. Now, if I'm able to, in, in a real-time manner, tell you that uh, the government of India, this much sugarcane is growing around the country today, government can definitely decide based on this information, should I allow export? Should I allow import? What should be the base rate, right? How should we make sure that we come out with certain policies that help or deter excess growing of, of sugar, right? So depending on what outcome we are able to provide, the right decision making can be done for a variety of requirements, including food security, including import-export, including organic, including a variety of uh, other areas.